Welcome to the Habits of the Few, where we discuss habits, rituals, and mindset tactics that you can use to reach your version of success. And now, here's your host, Mo Nabolsi. Hey guys, thanks again for tuning in to another episode. Today's episode is one of my favorites. This guy is an entrepreneur's entrepreneur. I've been following Evan Carmichael now for quite some time. This dude built, at 19, built a software biotech company. At 22, he raised nearly $15 million in venture capitalist funds. And right now, he's an author, a published author, a keynote speaker. He's he's, uh, trying to help, and his goal is to help 1 billion entrepreneurs change the world. He set world records. This guy has done so much and contributes so much that I, I'm i just so thankful that he was able to take 25 minutes of his time while on the road, I might say, on his tour that he's doing to sit down with me and ask him and answer some of my questions. Guys, listen, I urge you, take out a piece of paper and a pencil or a pen, write down these notes. I also want you guys to go and find him on Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, what have you. Go follow this guy. Learn from this guy. If you're striving to become an entrepreneur, if you're striving to become better, this is the guy that you want to model after. I implore you all to listen to this entire episode. And if you like it, please subscribe, click like, enjoy the episode. Talk to you guys soon. Sweet. So uh, maybe you can give like a maybe you can give like a quick 30 second thing where people that may not know who you are, which is highly doubtful, you can just kind of give them just a brief little 15 to 20 second intro about you yeah evan carmichael um probably best known for my youtube channel got 1.8 million subscribers and a quarter of a billion views having daily content three times a day helping uh, entrepreneurs inject them with belief with motivation with wisdom with ideas to help them uh, untap their potential that's what i do awesome so i uh i remember going through your book your one word and um i thought for a long time that my one word was success but when I, okay. you know, your your little speech that you were talking about when you went on, uh, I think you were in Malaysia talking about how you were about to go on this social media conference and this the, the guy that put on the event spoke to you two minutes prior to you actually getting in, getting on stage, yeah. you were actually nervous and you referenced Eminem. Eminem is like my favorite MC of all time. So I was like, that's okay. <laughs> nice. So, so uh, yeah, you only got one shot. So um, th- that to me kind of brought... Uh, brought awareness to really what what my one word is what success really is what what can it be and i think for me my one word changed and and i've I've been living my life through that and that's legacy so i I want i want to ask you you know um i'm in a similar field uh i I run and operate a digital marketing agency we we service clients nationwide i've been doing it now for about six years and i'm just now getting into really building my personal brand um, you know, well, why the podcast kind of started. I started this podcast like six months ago and it's been a big passion project of mine. So um, what would you give advice to someone like me? What would be like the, the next step? How could I start building my personal brand and leveraging this agency, this brick and mortar company that I've built um, with, with, coupled with social media? So what does legacy mean to you? Legacy means something that... Um, Something that will exist even after I'm gone and it will resonate, you know, for, for years and years and decades and decades after I'm dead. And, and why do you care so much? Like you're dead. Who cares? Why is this so important for you? It's important because I want, I want my values, my mantras, my way of life and living and, and the, the, the things that I've done and accomplished to not only resonate with me, but to resonate with my children and my children's children and so on and so forth and leave such a big impact to be like, maybe, you know, maybe 150 years from now, like, yeah, I remember that guy, like he did such a cool thing and this and that. It's not so much for like bragging rights or like popularity or celebrity or anything like that. I think I just want to make such a big impact that I left this world a little bit better than I, than, than, than when I entered it. And, uh, and, and if my name can come up and my great, great grandchildren, that leaves a smile on their face then that that to me is legacy right i mean and they're listening to it right now right right this this is great grandpa mo (laughs) doing his doing his interview show (laughs) right so 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 listen a brand is is an emotion 
So what's the emotion? What's the value that you want your brand to mean? When you wear a LeBron jersey or you're out in you're out in Portland, so maybe you don't like LeBron, but I do you like are made to, All right. <laughs> so then so you feel something. Like you feel why do people wear a LeBron jersey when they're going to the gym or when they're going to work out or when they're going to play basketball? You know, they feel something. Why do people wear Nike? Why do people like watching Elon Musk videos or Steve Jobs or Oprah? Like everybody has a feeling that you're then wanting to be around more. If you look at the content that I put out, I do. We profile so there's all these different successful entrepreneurs that I'm profiling. A lot of them have the same message. Yeah. You know, Oprah has a similar message to ET, the hip hop preacher. It's a very similar message. It's just. ET is going to yell at you through it and Oprah's going to hug you through it. And so it's a different vibe. It's a different emotion. So why legacy is so important to you, the, the meaning behind it, the emotion behind it is what you're going to be able to transfer to other people. And so there's lots of ways to do it. You can do it through your podcast, through your, through creating YouTube videos, through social media posts. There's a lot of different ways to go out and express yourself. You can do it through branding and, and clothing and uh, maybe you create your own music album. I don't know what you want to do. There's a lot of ways to do it, but I need to get the feeling of legacy and what that means to you in everything that you create, in every conversation you have, in every post that comes out so that if I'm if I'm with you, I'm, I'm your tribe and I think, yes, I want to have a legacy too. I want my name to mean something. I want my great grandkids to be listening to the things that I put out. If I'm in that tribe, then I want to be around you every day because you help make me feel that way when the people in my life don't. So that's your personal brand. I've never heard it to be so clear and concise. I think I think a lot of people try to identify brand with story and I think story is part of that, but to really encapsulate it in, in, in being an emotion, what is that emotion encompassing and then carry that emotion amongst everything that you do, That's I think that can be challenging because we're not always maybe in that moment or in that emotion and feeling that all the time. And so I have to be consciously aware of that. And that's that's a great piece of advice. The next question I have for you, thank you for that, um, was, you know, you, you started fairly young being an entrepreneur. Um, I think you were like, what, 18, 19 years old. What what drove you into that? You know, because back back, back in our day, entrepreneurship wasn't as glamorous as it is now. You know, now everybody thinks an entrepreneur is like being a, a, a pro athlete. So um, what, what was it that catapulted you into that? And, and, and how were you able to keep staying motivated? And, and what was the drive that kept you? Regret. Regret. I didn't want to regret it. I, I in university, had a chance to go work at these giant companies that, that I thought I wanted you know, 100K plus a year, travel around the world, like my dream jobs that I thought I wanted. And I had this opportunity to join a startup company, make $300 a month and own 30% of the business. And it was the toughest decision of my life. I didn't want to regret it. And so it's very rarely the things that you do that you regret. It's usually the things undone, the things not taken, the road that you were too afraid to go down. And I just imagine my life, this is the exercise I do. I imagine my life at the end, I'm a hundred years old. I'm sitting in a rocking chair, thinking about my life and think back to this moment. Will I regret being too scared to say yes to this thing? And so I thought, you know what? I can always get another job. It may not be the same job. It may not be as good a job. It may not be with that company. It may not be as much pay or as much travel, but I could get another job in a year I don't know if I'd ever get this chance again. And I know that I would kick myself if I didn't at least try. And I've adopted the mindset that I would rather know and fail than not know. I would rather know and fail and fall on my face than my entire life not know. And if you keep taking that approach, it leads you down some weird, wonderful, amazing paths. And uh, that's how you end up doing work that you really love. Would you say that regret is your one word? Is that the word that you live by today? No, believe is my one word. Believe. Um, and I make I make all my decisions through believe. Like I, I, I believe in you, man. Like I want your show to 
to, to crush. I, I believe your grand, great grandkids are listening right now and watching this, right? How many, however many decades down the road. But I think, I think living out of a negative state uh, all the time is not healthy. But you can use it in very acute moments to help you get over immediate fears that are in front of you. So living in a state of regret constantly, I don't think is a healthy thing to do. Right. But to use it to help you get over the fear of doing something, like maybe launching this show was scary for you. You know, maybe you're telling your friends or family, I'm going to do this show, and they, think, they say you're nuts. Or maybe you're doubting that nobody's going to listen, or nobody's going to say yes to be on your show, or you don't have the right questions, or all these doubts and fears and insecurities that will come up in launching something new. That's where in those acute moments when you doubt yourself, the fear of regret, you can use it as a powerful tool to push you forward. Every superhero has a dark side, but you can't live in it constantly. You have to be living a positive mission. You're living legacy. You're, you're, you're creating content for generations in your family, but it also will inspire other entrepreneurs who are listening, watching to say, I want to do that too. And by you, even just you trying, not even you succeeding, just you trying, just you getting out there and trying is an inspiration to others. That's fantastic. Thank you for that. Um, I think a lot of people, me and myself included, we, because when I first started to do this, I was really, I was like, why was, why is anybody going to listen to me? I just started reaching out to people on Instagram. I was, you know, I was being authentic. Like, hey, I just started the show. I want to talk to you. Like, you answered like fairly quickly. I was like, holy shit! Like, this, this can actually work. Like, what am I afraid of here? Like, if the worst thing that could happen is he says no, right? And I think, I think a lot of us, um, you know, we, we, we have that fear, and it kind of holds us back from taking any action or doing anything that maybe we want to do or, or aspire to be. I wanted to talk to you about, you know, I, I'm, I'm a father of three, married. Uh, I know that you're a dad and, and you're also married. How do you balance like doing stuff like this, um, traveling, speaking, going all over the place and at the same time being 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 there for your, for, for your children, for your wife and your family? So I think we compare ourselves too much to other people and yep. that's a recipe for disaster. I think you're, you need to map your, your actions to your ambitions, that your schedule should be a reflection of the life that you want to live. And so it starts with you stepping out at 10,000 feet and looking down on your life and saying, what does legacy for Mo mean? What does a legacy-filled, intentional life look like? How much time do you want to spend to be a great father? or to be a great husband, or to be a great entrepreneur, or to, to hone your interview skills, all of this stuff. How much time do you want to spend on those different activities? And then go do that. And, and who cares what somebody else thinks? I'm not here to judge you to say, here's how much time you need to spend with your wife or your kids. It's up to you. As long as you're happy, amazing. I look at The Rock as an example, and he, he has to work out for four hours a day. Yep. And so when he's on a movie set, He's got to, if he has to be at the movie set by nine, he wakes up at uh, four to go work out and then come back and shower, then be at the movie set. And he, he averages five hours of sleep while he's working movies. I think that's crazy. I look at that and I say, that's ridiculous, right? Like I would never do that. I don't look like The Rock. And when you hear him talking about it, that's balance for him. Mm -hmm. That's his balance. Great. Uh, just because we wouldn't do that, or maybe you do and you're a gym freak too, but I don't do that. I can't judge him to say, he's wrong. That's wrong. You need to spend more time doing this. You need to spend more time doing that. And so I think that's where all the insecurities and doubts come from, is you're comparing your schedule and your life against somebody else's, and you think that you don't measure up. Where the reality is looking at, what is, what is a legacy-filled life? There's only one Mo. And there's only one version of legacy that Mo cares about and go live that life instead of comparing yourself to other people. That's brilliant. Yeah. I, I, part of my morning routine is, is like I train, I do a lot of power lifting and strongman. If I didn't do that, my mind would be just chaotic and I wouldn't be as present as I would be if I did with like my children and my family and things like that. So I, I totally understand that. Um, the, uh, the next thing that I really wanted to ask you, so as I'm trying to build this personal brand of mine, would you recommend that I 
produce this content on all platforms like every day, several times a week? Do I need to um, just take macro content, dissect it into little bits and just kind of push it out? I mean, I have a team, so that'll be a little bit easier for me to do. But would you recommend like just kind of go all out balls to the walls or focus on one thing? I think people tend to try to do everything and then they suck everywhere. Yeah. So if I'm you, I would figure out first off, what is the thing that Mo is going to be the best in the world at? You may not be there yet, but it's your ambition. I want to be the best in the world at this. And maybe that's being the best interviewer in the world. And you're going to be the next Larry King or Oprah Winfrey because you're just going to master the skill set of, of interviewing. Um, maybe it's you're going to share motivational content. Maybe it's all around legacy and however you can transmit that vibe of legacy to other people like what are you going to be the best in the world at and then go all in on that thing in terms of platforms i would pick one and learn to crush it because people spread themselves too thinly and then they end up sucking everywhere there's opportunities everywhere you could go all in on twitter and crush it on twitter but because for most people your time gets spread across so many things you end up just being mediocre everywhere right. and so for my for my YouTube, it took me I'm I'm 10 years plus on YouTube now, and and now I'm at 1.8 million subscribers. You know, it took me a long time to get up there. Instagram, I started taking seriously about a year, uh, six months ago. And we we started last year with like 6,000 followers. Now we're at 108. Once you learn how to create good content, that's 80% of the game. So I can go to Instagram and grow quickly because I know how to create good content because I'm great at what I do and what I'm working on. The, that's 80% of the game. The other 20% is understanding the hacks. Instagram is different than YouTube, is different than podcasts, it's different than stuff. It's a major point. People focus on the hacks. The right hashtag is not gonna save you on Instagram. You need to know how to create great content. And so I put my head down and figure out what do you have the ability to be among the best in the world at, and then go and do that thing and become great at it. And then you can worry about expanding to other stuff. In the world. I'm taking notes. I'm not I'm not ignoring you. <laughs> Ignore me, man. I don't care. It's great. It's <laughs> no, no, show. no. Just, just taking notes. <laughs> taking notes. It's all good. Either way, man. I'm, I'm good. I'm <laughs> I got to write this stuff down. Um, okay. I got to ask. This is just kind of funny. Do you really have a Doritos bag with you at all times? Uh, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm driving now, but we've got... Man, I got Danny in the back seat right now who's eating these these tortilla chips, homemade tortilla chips with this oh. salsa. It, oh. It's amazing. I'm, all, all, I'm on a keto and intermittent fasting. All I've had is coffee so far today, and I love it. I love the smell. Like I love that I'm stronger than that smell. Um, and so for people who don't know like what's happening right now, I have a strategy called Damn the Doritos where I think the I want to attack things that make me feel powerless. I want to attack them because if you don't, then those things will, will have power over you forever. Yeah. So when people are on a diet, the common advice is get all the junk food out of the house. Uh, I think that actually in the long term makes you weaker because you're training yourself that, that you are not capable of being around junk food. So whenever you go on a vacation or whenever you leave your house, you're screwed. And so it might be a great short term strategy, but I want to start introducing it back in just to show myself that I'm strong enough. And so my weakness is Doritos. I love Doritos. The the sweet chili Doritos are, are my gen. And that's, that's the stuff. Um, and so I have a giant bag of Doritos that we went to Costco and it sits in front of my desk. That's so uh, now I'm on a tour. I'm doing 90 days, 23 cities. Uh, so we have Doritos, we have we have peppermint patties, we have fudge, we have like everything. It just sits right there on the kitchen counter. And I love looking at it. I love looking at it, knowing that I'm stronger than that fudge. And come Saturday, I'm going to destroy that fudge. There you but go. until then, until then, until then, man, <laughs> I'm stronger than it. And I love it. And so I think that that makes me stronger. And so anything that you feel just like judgment, you know, even you are reaching out and saying, hey, people may not respond. What's the worst thing that people can say? No, no, the worst is worse. People might say, hey man, Mo, I hate you. I hate you. You know, like you suck. And and that blue sweater of yours sucks. Like somebody might say that, you know? <laughs> Great, 
like it's it's rewarding your effort not the results are you proud right. of your effort right right sometimes right. you'll get hate sometimes people will will look at you and hate you just because of your last name you know like that's gonna happen are you are you are you proud of your effort that you put in and if you're constantly proud of your effort and not the results you will end up getting amazing results it's one of the best pieces of advice I've ever heard in my life cool man Holy You're bringing shit. it out. It's all you, dude. So, I wanted to. T- I know this is a big topic, and I know you're short on time, but I did want to talk about this before because it was on my mind. Your 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 mantra or your mission is really to take is to help people, um, not necessarily demonize, but to to transform self doubt into belief, right? Because there's there's a lot of like negative talk and self doubt in your subconscious mind, and yada 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 yada. Um, and you know, I, I fought with that and I dealt with that for years on years on years on end until I started journaling and doing gratitude logs and, and, you know, positivity and stuffing my brain with good information. And so what, what is like, what is like a good, what is a good strategy that you can share in a few minutes that won't take you too long? That can, that can at least give you the first step from going from, from, from a mindset of self doubt into, like you say, an unstoppable belief. What's the first thing most of America does in the morning? The very first thing? They check their phones. Okay, and before that, what do they do? Um, go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I think most people actually check their phones before going to the bathroom. Yeah. Uh, most of America snoozes. They hit the snooze button. Oh, yeah, that's true. I don't know. The very I first thing. <laughs> okay, so, so if somebody wants to fix it, here's the problem. Here's how I see snoozing. You set a goal last night Mm -hmm. that you're going to wake up at a certain time. That's the very last thing you did before going to bed. And then the very first thing you do is you slam that snooze button and you say, I am not going to hit my goal today. Uh. I'm not going to hit my goal, right? You set a goal. I'm going to wake up at 6 a.m., 7 a.m., whatever time people get up. And the very first thing you do, yeah, you've lost. Like, how do you think you're going to go off and do these crazy, scary, ambitious goals of yours when the first thing you do is tell yourself that, you're not hitting your goals. There's no way. Right. And so the problem is you don't have credibility with yourself. You don't respect yourself. When you say that you're going to do something, you know you're not going to do it. And so for me, I treat it as you're going to the gym. So when you go to the gym, you know, what are you what are you lifting now when you go to the gym? Uh, today I'm doing squats. A lot of lower body. Great. Okay, so what do you are, are you are you lifting with weights on squats? Yep. Great. What are you gonna What are you gonna put on your squats? How much weight? Today I'm doing sub maximal, so probably like around four four twenty five. Great. But when you started, like now, that's your sub maximal. When you first started, what did you put on your squats? Just the bar. Yeah. I had to learn right? technique. Yeah. That's the thing, and you weren't strong enough. Now you're sub maximum is is way ahead of where you were before and and that it's the same thing with all of this stuff it's it's training that mindset so if if anybody's watching listening and they hit the snooze button every day that's where you start when you set a goal for yourself you have to follow through otherwise you you have no respect for yourself and you're teaching yourself that you're the kind of person who sets goals and doesn't do it so there's no way you're going to go in and and put 425 on that bar right from the start you start with just the bar. So you start where you're at. And some people listening, they have zero credibility with themselves because they hit the snooze button eight times every day. And so that's where you start. You set simple goals and then you start to follow through and you start teaching yourself, huh, I, I can actually do this. And that allows you to take on bigger and bigger goals. So you have to be very careful about the goals you set for yourself. And whenever you do it, you have to follow through and respect your effort. So if you said you're going to go to the gym today, but you're not feeling sick, you're, you're feeling sick, you're, or you didn't sleep well last night, if I'm you, I still go to the gym and I just squat with the bar because I'm not rewarding the results, I'm rewarding the effort because when you do the thing when it's hard is when you actually build self-respect, but when you do the thing and it's easy, you don't care. Like you going in and squatting with a bar when you're feeling 100% is super easy. That's not something you're going to reward yourself for. Right. But if it was hard and you did it, even if you failed, if it's hard and you tried, you feel great about yourself. 
or at least you should. So it's rewarding the effort. Yeah, because there, there, there's always going to be days where you don't feel like doing it, where you have no energy, you're sore, you're hurt, well, not maybe hurt, and 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 you're you're not at your peak. So you go in, like I'll go in on days where I'm just like beat up, and I'll do you know light. I'll try to do lighter weight, more repetition, push forth intensity versus versus you know uh, weighted progression. And uh, and I still get a good workout. I feel better when I'm done. Dopamine levels have been released. I'm good to go, and that helps. And, and I think you're right. I think a lot of people that that's crazy because I never really acknowledge that that's where it starts. It starts the first thing in the morning, and the moment that you hit the snooze button is the moment that you lose, and and you're basically programming yourself to lose each and every day. And, yeah. And and it's really hard to come out of that especially when you've been doing pro- I love it you're programming yourself to lose every day that's what most of America wakes up and does wow um, how much time do you got left we got four minutes okay <laughs> what do we got four minutes last thing uh, what was it I had it written down here um, what would be what would be so we've identified We've identified that hitting the snooze button is going to be uh, programming yourself to lose. How can we overcome that? What if somebody is really struggling and they're just like, damn, I cannot do it. What is a, what is a practical means to, to train yourself? You make that your only goal. You make that your only Stop goal. having like a thousand goals that you need to get done for the day. Just start with that because you overwhelm yourself and you get nothing done. So you make that your only goal and then you get up. Like even when you're talking about the gym, you don't feel good, you go to the gym and you work out, but you still get the the, the release, you still get the, the good vibes from working out. Even if you don't, give yourself the good vibes. Like even if you go to the gym and you do four squats because that's all you're capable of doing with just the bar, you're not gonna get any health benefit from that. You're not gonna get any rush at all. Mm. But if that's me, I'll, I'll be cheering myself on, pat myself on the back because I did it. The effort, it's the mental rush that you need to give yourself. And so if you're having a hard time, I think people often say like, put the phone out of the room, like put it in the room, put it in the kitchen. So you have to get out of bed. I think that makes you weaker. Like even just thinking about that now makes you want to put it right next to my bed. So that it's right there. And I'm just going to hit off and get up and I'm going to be tired. And then I'm going to celebrate and say, I'm amazing. Because I just got up and did this impossible thing. For you, for Mo, he doesn't have to snooze. He doesn't snooze. So that's not a big win for him. So so you getting up and not hitting the snooze button, you're not going to feel great about yourself because you already do that anyway. But for some people, it's the greatest thing of all time. And you need to recognize what you just accomplished instead of comparing yourself to Mo or somebody else. Yeah, I think comparing yourself to others, like you mentioned earlier on in the video, is, is probably... The, the number one thing that you shouldn't be doing and just really focusing on your strengths and your process and, and your effort. So I appreciate that, man. Well, um, this is going to be amazing. I'm excited to uh, get this edited and sent off and, and hopefully you don't mind this being promoted everywhere. Um, and if you would like a link, I'll definitely send you a link as soon as it's edited, man. I, I truly appreciate your time and I, I wish you the best of luck on this entire tour. That's crazy and bonkers and, and totally awesome. Cool, man. Thank you for the love. And we're going to get out to Portland one day. It's on our list. It's on our list. You should. It's a great spot, man. A lot of good food. I I told Nina I'd take her to every city in North America with a million plus people. That's why we're doing this tour. And Portland is uh, is on. Portland and Seattle in the middle of nowhere. So that's the problem. But we're going to get out there. Uh, So because it's it's a million plus people. So maybe maybe we'll connect. All right. I'd love it, man. I'd love it. That'd be amazing. Thank you, brother. Cool. All right. Thank you for the love and energy. And and you ask great questions and care a lot. And I'm pumped for your journey, man. Keep doing it. Thank you. That means a lot. I appreciate that. All right. Much love, Mo. Peace. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into today's episode. We appreciate you. As always, please like and subscribe. We love positive reviews. We're on iTunes. We're on Spotify, Stitcher, Casto, Simplecast, Podbean. You name it, we're on it. We love your continued support and we appreciate your continued support. As always, stay tuned for the next episode. 
And as always, peace. <laughs>